But uh, I'm going to ask you tonight to take your Bible and turn to the book of 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. And let me ask you a question. Are, are we thankful? Are we really? We say we're thankful a lot, but do we show it? Are we expressing our thankfulness? And uh, I'll, let me ask you another question. When it's everything's going good, when everything's just going exactly the way we like, it's easy to be thankful. But what about when it's not? What about when things seem to be falling apart and things to be going uh, just exactly the way you don't want them to go? That's when we really need to show thankfulness. That's when you and I, uh, again, that, that giving thanks is just, uh, it, it's, it's, it's an expression of, of a sentiment. Uh, it's, it's, it's what we do of gratitude. It, it's what we say. It, it, I mean, it, it's what, it, we're, when we're showing thankfulness, sometimes we don't understand and we won't understand until we get there. Then it won't matter because we'll be in heaven. Uh, why we're going through what we go through. While we're going through sufferings, while we're going through trials, and a lot of times we'll let those things uh, press down upon us, those things come against us, and, and what happens is it, it, it will crush or it, it will extinguish a thankful spirit that's in you or me. But yet God, the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, I, I appreciate that song about one hand. That one is unity. And all three is, they're, yet they're separate, yet they're one. They're in unity. But we find here that when we go through these things, and uh, it, it'll crush our thankful spirit. And what we ought to be doing, instead of pouting, or, or instead of, uh, when I say that, uh, feeling sorry for ourselves, we ought to be rejoicing in what God has already done for us. Hey, folks, he's been, he's faithful. And he always will be. He, that, that's, that's part of his nature. That's part of his makeup. A lot of times we'll get focused on our pain and we'll, we'll be confused. And I, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes uh, I, I begin to doubt. I, I know nobody else ever suffers from that, but I'll begin to doubt and I'll begin to question. And, I, and, I, and I'll, I'll say this, why? But I just want to tell you something. We ought to be thankful in every situation we face. Every situation. Whether it's good, whether it's bad. And, and a lot of times we'll say, well, uh, it's our feelings. Folks, we ought not trust our feelings, by the way. I love what Adrian Rogers says about our feelings. He says our feelings are the most shallowest part of us. And God doesn't do a deep work in shallow waters, by the way. So our feelings, you know, does our feelings matter? Well, yeah, but not really. And he says, what happens when we can get past our feelings? Well, we'll reap some benefits from that. I, I know this is a cliche, but I've got to say it. And I believe it's applicable tonight. And it talks about our gratitude. And it talks about our attitude. And if we have an attitude of gratitude, that will determine our altitude. That's right. A lot of times we're, we're, we, we, we keep ourselves down when, when it's our own fault. But yet, you know what we're lacking today, especially uh, maybe not in our older generation, and I'm not talking about our older generation, but in our younger generations, we're lacking that attitude of gratitude. And we're expecting, it's all about me. It's all about this or that. And, and folks, it's really not about me. It's really not about you. But it's all about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about Him. And, and there's two really, two prominent scriptures here that talks about uh, Thanksgiving. And we'll, well, we'll probably do a couple of things. You know, you believe Thanksgiving's next week? Christmas was just two weeks ago. And here we are, Thanksgiving. But yet, Thanksgiving ought not be a season. 
It ought not to be just a certain time of year that we do that. It ought just to be a way of life. It ought to be something that comes natural to a child of God. So we got these two scriptures here that talks about uh, giving thanks. And again, thanksgiving and being thankful. And all this is, is not stationary. It's not sedentary. But it's action. There's some action to it. And here in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, verse number 18, but the other ones, Paul talks about it in Ephesians chapter number 5, verse number 20. He says, giving thanks always. Now that means always, doesn't it? That means good. That means bad. That means all the time. He says, giving thanks always. And then, then he qualifies that for all things. You know, sometimes I'm just not thankful for all things, but I ought to be. He said, for all things, and then he goes on to say, unto God and the Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ. But here in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, Paul is writing here. He's starting verse number 16, and just two little words here in this verse. He says, rejoice evermore. Boy. And he's talking, to he's talking to children of God that you and I, we ought to be rejoicing even when you don't feel like it. Right. Even when things are not going right, even when things are not uh, going our way, we ought to be rejoicing. Not because of our situation, not because of our circumstance, but because of who the Lord Jesus Christ is and what he's done. And then, all he, then he says, pray without ceasing. You mean I got to pray all the time? Well, yeah. I mean, you don't have to close your eyes and bow your head. I mean, I wouldn't advise you to do that driving down the road. But yet, we can go with something on our hearts and minds talking to the Lord. You know, if you fill your mind with talking to the Lord, that doesn't really leave a whole lot of room for something else to weasel in. And I, I know... I know we don't have that problem. We're sitting around and all of a sudden uh, you have a thought and you say, where did that come from? But if we fill our mind and we pray without ceasing, that, that kind of that fills up this empty spot I've got. And it fills it up with him. But, he, that, but here in verse number 18, he says, in everything give thanks now, he says, for this is the will of God. So if you want to know the will of God, he's giving it to you right here. He said, in everything give thanks. This is. Notice what he said, for this is the will of God in Christ. Now, who's this concerning? It's not somebody else. It's not, uh, it's not somebody else's fault. It's not somebody else that he's talking to. He's talking to me. He's talking to you. He says, concerning you. So, there's, a, there's just a simple text here telling you and I the will of God is for us to give thanks. Us to be thankful. Us to, to uh, give him, folks, even, even in the hard times, he's worthy to be praised. But I want to give you just a few things tonight of why we should be thankful to God in everything. Why should we, why should we be thankful? To God and everything. Well, the first thing we see here, uh, again, I, I'm just gonna. We're just gonna try to give you a few scriptures, and again, I'm not gonna. We're not gonna take the time to turn to all of them. But the very first thing it says, it, it keeps you and I. It will keep us continually aware. Have you ever been caught unaware? Caught unsuspectingly. But it keeps us aware that we're walking in His presence. That we're always, folks, there's not a time in my life, not a time in your life, that you won't be walking in the presence of God. No matter where we go, no matter what we do, you cannot hide. We'll be walking in His presence. You know what that'll do? That'll lead us to live a godly life. That'll lead us to live a godly life as believers. As believers, as children of God, folks, I've I got some good news for you. Even though you may be alone, you'll never walk alone. Even though you might be in the house by yourself, you're not in the house by yourself. I like what, uh, again, you see these pictures in the operating room about the great physician. 
And you got these doctors, but there's one, and he's the, he is the great doctor, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, we won't walk alone. Why? Why would we never be alone? Because he's given us the Holy Spirit to walk with us. He's given him to walk. Brother Adam, you've got him no matter what or no matter where you may go. He's with you. He's there. In times of hurt, in times of joy, in times of tears, in times of laughter, he is there. He's not going to leave you. He said, no matter. No. <laughs> now, this might come as a shock. No matter what might happen throughout the day. You know, we, we say we don't know what a day may bring, but we really don't know what the next moment might bring to you and I. What, kind, what the next phone call might bring. And he says here that no matter what may happen throughout that day, he said he's, we can thank him. We ought to be giving him thanks. You know why? Well, one, he loves us. He, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I think about my ways and I think, how in the world? I don't even like myself. How can he love me? But he loves me anyway. He loves me in spite of myself. He, in spite of my foolishness sometimes. But he, he's all loving. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. He's omniscient. He's all-knowing. But he's omnipresent, too. You know, that old devil, he's not omnipresent. You might think he is, but he's not. He can't be everywhere at all. He just can only be one place at one time. Now, he's got a lot of helpers, by the way. But the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, I'm, he's, he's everywhere at all times. He's with you. He's with me. So we can be thankful. That, why? Because he's continually with us. I like what he said in Hebrews. That's what Paul said in Hebrews chapter number 13, verse number 5. And he's talking about being content in all things. That's tough for today's generation, isn't it? They can't be content for five minutes with nothing. And I'm talking about my grandchildren. I know nobody else has got grandchildren like this. But they got these phones, and they can't put them down for two minutes or they just go crazy. But he says, be content in all things. And then he goes on to say this. Jesus said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Hallelujah. What does that mean? He's going to be with you. He's going to be right there. And then number two, we can be thankfulness. You know, thankfulness will motivate you and I. Thankfulness, when we're thankful in these circumstances, we're thankful in these situations, it'll motivate you and I to look for God's purpose in those things. You know, God has a purpose for trials. He's got a purpose for troubles. I, I said this the other day in, in, in service. We talk about our faith, and we want more faith, and we want stronger faith, and, uh, and, and we say, oh, if I only had more faith. But folks... God has already given you a measure of faith. You've already got whatever faith you need. But what the problem is, our faith is not tested, therefore it's weak. A faith is not tested, you can't be trusted. But when we get our faith tested, we can trust Him. And we can see the purpose in everything that happens, whether it be good or bad. God has a purpose. God has a purpose for that. I know nobody ever experiences unexpected trials or unexpected sufferings. I know that it never make, make you or me question what God's doing. But yet, God is sovereign in all things. You know, <coughs> excuse me. Have you ever felt like God's forgot you? He forgot where he put you. That, that it's been so long since you've heard from him that God, that he doesn't care what's going on with you. Can I say he does care? He loves you. And Paul, Paul tells us in Romans 8, 28, everybody should be familiar with that scripture, that all things work together for what? Good. Good. 
to them that love him. Amen. So we see hear these, it motivates you. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got the effalutus. I don't have COVID, but uh, yeah, that, that C word scares everybody. But it gets us motivated. I, I like what Peter, First Peter said. First Peter chapter number four, uh, verse number 12. He said, beloved. I like that word, don't you? You know, who's he talking to? When he calls you beloved, he's talking to you. <laughs> he said, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which come to try you. Folks, he's not there to hurt. He's helping you and I. Uh, and folks, it just helps you and I to know the Lord's purpose in these things. You know, and we may not know every time. You know, there are some things that we're not meant to know. There are just a few things that we're not meant to know. But you know what we ought to do? Just take it, thank God, and go on. Thank God and go on. So what, what else? Number three, it says, being thankful. <coughs> being thankful will bring us into submission to God's will when we're suffering heartache and pain. You know, it, it's hard to be brought down when you're on a mountain. But you get in a valley, you get in the heartaches, you, you get to a place where you just don't think you can take another step, that'll put you on your knees. That'll put you in a place that's, that, that when, when you ought to be in the midst of an emotional or physical pain. It's hard to feel grateful, isn't it? It's hard to feel thankful. But that's the time when we ought to start expressing thanks the most when we feel the worst because when we start express, I'm talking about a physical expression I'm talking about physically saying thank you Lord I'm talking about looking up and thanking him for all these things what's that do well one, that gets us kind of unfocused off of what we're going through and get us focused on him then all of a sudden all this pain and all this sufferings that we're going through seems to get a little smaller. It gets a whole lot bigger. So when we begin to express it verbally, as we keep thanking Him, you know what's going to happen? We can say a lot of words, right? We can say a lot of things, and, and, and we, we say a lot of things, but does our words match our walk? When our words don't match our walk, there's a problem. But if we keep saying it enough and we keep doing it enough, eventually our words and our walk is going to match. He says, can I, can, I make, can I tell you this? God knows your weakness. He knows your weakness. He knows my weakness. You know what else he knows? He knows what pushes your buttons. That's why mom told me to put my hands in my pocket growing up so I wouldn't push buttons. He knows. And God knows our weaknesses. And He knows those things that, 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 that troubles us. But you know what He does? He'll honor when we start expressing thanks to Him. He'll honor that. Uh, you remember when Jesus was praying in the garden? You, you remember what He said? He said, let this cup pass from me. This cup. He said, This cross, this, this pain, this suffering, all that I'm going through. He said, Let this cup pass from me. And then he says, Except I drink it. Then he says, Thy will. He said, It wasn't his will, but it was the will of the Father that he, that he was following. It wasn't, it wasn't his will. And we find here, when, when, we, when we quit trying to uh, I guess impose our will and look for his will things may get a little better things may get a little better you know the fourthly giving thanks or thanksgiving it's essential you know have, have you ever read the cereal boxes especially them sugared cereals that really 
much in it except sugar. They said they're fortified with essential vitamins. What does it mean? Well, it wasn't in there to begin with. They had to add them to it. So the kids and the parents would just say, here, finally, have it. But it's essential. And that's giving her thanks when we're suffering. Folks, that's essential. That's essential to you and I that when we do that, what's, what's it going to do? Well, notice verse number 16, rejoice evermore. You know, it's hard to rejoice evermore without giving thanks and everything. You just can't do it. You just won't be able to do it. So when we're rejoicing evermore, what does that mean? Well, rejoice always in everything. Give thanks. He's, t- he's just simply telling you and I here that when we're rejoicing, he said, although, folks, now I'll be honest with you. Even though the pain might be, I mean, might be extreme and the hurt might be extreme, we can get by that. We can get through that. How? And again, not on our own, not in our own power, not in our own will, but by giving him praise and honor and giving thanks. It's hard to feel joy in the moment of pain, isn't it? But I like what the psalmist says. He's weeping may endure for a night, but what? Joy cometh in the morning. Joy. Now, I like joy, don't you? I like it a whole lot better than weeping and wailing and all that. (coughs) So can I ask you a question? When we're hurting, when things seem to be just going south, can we make a choice to be thankful? It's a choice. We can choose not to be thankful or we can choose to be. I'd say choose to be thankful, wouldn't you? Has anybody here had a prayer answered recently? Sure, you probably have. Isn't it wonderful when God answers prayers? It's wonderful. So what does that mean? God hears. And God knows. And God hears today. He hears us when we're in these situations. <coughs> And he understands. He understands the depth of her pain. He knows. And, and, and we all know, folks, our own family sometimes can cause us the greatest pain, can't they? Our own family. And yet, God knows. He understands this thing. And, and he understood. Jesus understands the pain and the suffering. Uh, when he was on the cross, what did, he say, what did he say to the Father? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? See, he understands. He knows. I, I like what James said, though. James said this in chapter number 1, verse number 2. James told you and I to do what? Count it all joy. Well, when we fall into these divers' temptations. Yeah. He said, count it all joy. Now, I know, I understand. We're, we're still human. Well, I understand we still have all these emotions, and I understand that. But if we can just step back and take two or three breaths and start praising Him and counting it all joy, things may start to change. Things may start to change. Fifthly, He said, Thankfulness or being thankful to God in hard times or in difficult times. Here's what it's going to do. It gives your, it gives my witness, it gives your witness a greater impact. You can touch more people by giving God thanks and giving God glory in the hard times than you will in the good times. He says this our when we go through pain and we go through trouble we go through all these things it's our response to those things it's how we respond to those things that makes a difference he said by doing what? by sharing our struggles 
by sharing their testimonies, by sharing these things with others who may not understand what God's doing, we might be able to show the love of Christ through our sufferings, through our troubles. I like Paul. Paul was a good example of that, wasn't he? Paul suffered. Paul suffered greatly. Oh, over, over in the book of Philippians, in chapter 3, verse 8, Paul said he, he suffered the loss of all things. He said, I suffered the loss of all things. And he said, he counted it all but dung, or in other words, waste, for this, that I may win Christ. Through our suffering, through our heartaches, through our pain, if we was to win just one soul to Christ, wouldn't it be worth it? Wouldn't it be worth it? And Paul is just simply giving you and I uh, some of these things here. And lastly, number six, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. When we start praising Him, we start giving Him glory, we start giving Him honor, what happens? Well, it focuses our attention on Him rather than our circumstance. Rather than what's going on in our lives, in our homes, in our family, in our church family. We can get focused on, we can get focused on these things and it, it may tear us apart, but if we get focused on Him, that's going to be that one hand. That's going to be that one. He'll bring us in unity. But don't you notice here, he says, we can fix our eyes. I can get focused on the pain. I can get focused on the, on the, on the hard path. I, I was watching them kids when they come in. They bounced down the stairs. And they bounced up the stairs. And I'm like, my goodness. I don't know how they've done it. I mean, it's just like rabbits. You see, that'd be a hard path for me. I could get focused on that, and I could get fixed on that, and I may not even try. But if I get focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, and I get focused on Him, uh, what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to tell you, peace is going to come upon me. Peace, will gonna, peace is going to come upon you. Now, if we get focused on pain, peace is going to elude us. It's going to run. It's going to flee. We're not going to experience it. Have you ever been in this? Been in situations where you thought it was hopeless? That you thought there's no way, no way I'm going to get out of this. And you had one of them but God moments. God showed up. God showed up and he showed out. And he made a difference. He made a, and by the way, he says, with all temptations, he'll make a what? A way out of those things. A way to escape. Hallelujah. I like those escape routes that you can take, don't you? So he says, we're not alone. We can be certain. We can be reminded that we can know for certain, Brother Sammy. We're not walking down this road alone. We're not here. God just didn't leave to suffer. He left us here purpose. Amen. To be a witness for Him. So we're not alone. We're not, he's not left us alone. He said, I, I, I'm not going to leave you alone. He said, I'm going to go away, but I'm going to send you what? Another comforter. Can I say God's with us? How, how, when's he with us? Always. And I want to remind you of this. God loves you. God loves you. Have you ever felt like nobody loved you? That's right. Have you ever felt like you've just been left all alone and nobody cares? I want to tell you tonight, God loves you. He loves you. God loves us. And then, i got better news for you. If you're saved, you're eternally secure. 
Now, I want to tell you something. If you're not saved, you're going to have eternal existence. That means you'll be somewheres, and it won't be with him. It'll be in hell. But if you're saved, you're washed in the blood. You've got eternal You've got eternal salvation. Hey, hey, he says he, we're secure in him. Well, the Lord walks with us. And whatever we go through, he's going to bring us through it. Yes. Now, whatever we go through, whatever trouble, whatever trial, whatever heartache, whatever pain, whatever joy, it, it's all... Not, it's all not just bad news, by the way. I'm talking about the good things, too. I'm talking about the joyful things, too. The things that just makes you smile and feel good. God is going to use all those. All those things. He's going to turn those experiences into something profitable in our lives. That's what God will do. That's what God will do. Brother Matthew, that's what God's going to do for you. He's going to do that. So when adversity comes, and it's going to come, it's going to come. How do you know? He said, well, in this life, you will have tribulations. So he said, they're going to come. So when they come, what do we do? Do we look at God and judge him by our circumstances? Well, God can't be good. He's letting me go through that. Are we going to look at him and say, thank you, Lord, for being with me in this circumstance? Thank you, Lord. Are we going to judge him by what we're in or by what the Scripture says? The Scripture says he's faithful. He's faithful in all things. So when we look at our perspective, when we look at these things, it does. It does have an effect on our thankfulness, on our gratitude, and how we trust in the Lord, our ability to trust in the Lord. I'd ask you tonight. I'm going to ask Miss Gail to, or David to come to the piano. Brother Sammy to have a song of invitation. And this thing of thankfulness, this thing of gratitude, it's really a virtue of the highest excellency as it implies a feeling and a generous heart. Well, I think of Gwen a lot when I think of generosity, don't you? She had a generous heart. And a generous heart and a proper sense of our duty, our attitude. Do we have an attitude of gratitude? Or do we just have an attitude? I hope we've got a grateful heart. Would you stand? <clears throat> and if you need to come pray, the Lord knows our heart tonight. He knows where we stand. He knows whether we're thankful or not. And if you need to come pray, the altar's open, the invitation's open.